So I've asked a bunch of creators and developers and people I've met here at WWDC what their favorite new feature that was announced, brought to the OSs, new Macs, whatever is, but the asterisk of that was they weren't allowed to say the headset because this would have been a really boring video if I didn't put that stipulation on it. But I love my Apple Watch and I think like the cycling and hiking features that they added which are kind of cool. Mm. Like, when the Apple Watch tells me that there's an activity that I need to do, I start doing it. So I think I might have to start cycling now. I'm yeah, I'm really excited for that. My parents are going to love that. I'm excited for the hiking stuff because yeah. I go up to Yosemite a lot. So that's really cool. You can set a waypoint uh -huh. and then if you are off track and you don't have cell reception, it'll mark the last waypoint where you did have cell reception. So you can go back if you need it. Which Just I've cool. definitely done. I've yeah. totally done that. I've definitely gotten lost in the woods. Yeah. For me, it's a lot of the changes in SwiftUI data flow. And what this means basically is when you're writing SwiftUI code, it's going to be way less error prone. And you're going to, everyone's had that moment where you're like, why isn't my view updating? I'm modifying this thing and my view is not, you know, not changing. And they've dramatically improved that and made that less likely to happen. So. That's a huge programmer productivity boost. The thing that I'm most excited about is the journaling app. So I really care about journaling. It's something that I believe in. And I think that Apple have done a really good job of creating something that is, like uses all of the stuff that they have, right? Mm -hmm. But also with the prompts. Yeah. And, and encouraging people to think about their day, write about how they're feeling. I think it's going to make a big difference. And this comes from a guy that makes a journal. Yep. So, so yeah. I believe in it. And yeah. I'm happy that they're doing it. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I had a briefing, to, they were talking about the mental health stuff and how yeah. it kind of all, I think that's really cool. Yeah. That Can't be the headset. Cannot oh, be the headset. Uh, I think I'm going to make the standby mode, which is on the new iPhone, which is, or not new iPhone, new feature coming to iPhone where you essentially put it horizontal and charging and it shows you kind of a heads up display of things that you might want to glance for. Because it really seems like Apple wants to make like a, a voice assistant with a screen, a HomePod with a screen, and it seems like all the software is there now. And as someone who uses it in the kitchen all the time, uh, I'm here for that, especially like timers, multiple name timers. Not the headset. Not the headset. So Not that going to iOS 17, there were a couple of features that I really, really liked. So one was this new feature called Name Drop, where I feel like this is the future of contact sharing. You can just tap on someone else's phone and share your your email, phone, everything. So you don't have to just give someone your phone to put it in. I feel like that's going to be a game changer. Yeah. Also, I really liked the new voicemail feature where you can see when someone's calling you, you can see exactly what they're saying in the voicemail without actually answering the call. So I feel like that's really cool. And then also I'm going to say one other thing. Yeah, go um, for it. <laughs> the fact that you can leave voicemails in FaceTime is, I think is a really game changer. That's I feel like cool. that's been a really requested feature from a lot of users. And just being able to like leave someone a message, be like, hey, like call me back, you know, whatever. And and having that through FaceTime, I feel like that's a really cool feature to have. So. Yeah, for a lot of a lot of times I get FaceTime calls, I'm like, is this going to be a long thing or a short day? Exactly. And I'm like, I kind of want to know ahead of time. Right. I like it. Well, Sage Manager on the iPad. I, I know that. Yeah. Wait, 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 I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. During, During the keynote, yeah. you like... Like, yeah. you're not supposed to do that when you're press, but yeah. what, like, All the press people just sit there, and I'm sitting there like, yeah! No. When, you're, when you're happy about something, you got you to gotta show your hands. Yeah, Sage yeah. Manager on the iPad... I think it's um, it's really nice to see, even if it's just been a year, to see already change, major changes. Uh huh. Oh, big time. Major big time. changes. Yeah, time. not small things. Not like, small things. Like complete over. Like we got the things you and I the, were complaining about the most, the top of our list. Change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And where we can position them and everything. And the second thing I would say, widget kit with interactions. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm very excited for that, especially for timery and uh, things, task manager. Uh, those are going to be Everything big. Everything really that, that used to sort of force us to open the app, and now it just does something on the home screen. Uh -huh. I mean, that's going to be part of it. That's, that's going to be huge. I'm very excited about that. Uh, the thing I'm literally most excited about from the betas is the voice to text. It is so much better now. I was running it last night. Ooh. I did like a thousand words and made like one or two mistakes. It's really good. So if you want to dictate to your devices, you're going to be able to do that in September. I know you're a big dictation guy. I remember yeah. listening on Mac Power users. Yeah, yeah, used to wrote, what was that software called? I forgot. I just Dragon. Wrote, Dragon. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah no, uh, that, that. This is Dragon level. You know, they're using an LLM, so it's really good. I'm going to go with something small. Okay. It is that widgets are finally free of the tyranny of Notification Center on the Mac. Oh. You can put them on the desktop. Yes. They do this cool thing where they fade out when they're not in focus. It's the spirit of dashboard is alive. I love dashboard. Um, and there's Excel shortcut widgets now, too. Ooh, finally. This has been like missing. Right? Yeah. It's like, what if I need more than two of them? Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited. And the small widget now has two 
shortcuts in one of the small one. That's very exciting. Still not as many. It still takes up more space than the app icons because yeah. you can get four icons. Right. But yeah. Micah, what is something that you're like the, your favorite thing that was announced, but it cannot be the headset. You're not allowed to say the headset. It has to be something other than the headset because everyone would say it. Believe it or not, it's audio message transcriptions in iOS and iPadOS because I love to send audio messages, but I hate to receive them. And so being able to get those text transcripts is going to make it so that I can actually respond to people like I'd like to. Yeah, I, I, I know somebody, <laughs> Noah Herman, uh, that sends uh, like five minute long voice messages. And, My little brother, he does yeah, that. Yeah, and it's like, I don't want to listen to this. No, I don't so. have time. Hey, what's up? I'm Noah. I'm a fellow Apple-centric creator and talkative friend of Chris's. And uh, what I'm excited about that came out of WWDC 2023 is the MacBook Air uh, 15 inch. I've owned the 13 inch for a while and love it. I just don't like how the screen is smaller than that of my 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I don't like the heft and the bulk of my Pro a lot of the time. I mean, I love the power on the go, but I love the thin and light sort of portability aspect of the Air. So the fact that we get a bigger screen this year is fabulous and I cannot wait to get my hands on the Air because of that. This video and all of my WWDC 2023 videos are sponsored by Dark Noise. Dark Noise is one of my all-time favorite applications. This is a noise app that doesn't just sound good, it looks good as well. Dark Noise has over 50 different high quality sounds from white noise to thunderstorms to calming beaches to spaceships. When playing a sound, you get these stunning animations. But the app takes it a step further as well. You can make mixes of the sounds to build custom scenes. One of my favorites that I made mixes heavy rain and thunderstorms with creek and windy tree sounds. This is extremely calming to me. Dark Noise is the app I use when I need to focus and get some serious work done. I can distract myself really easily and avoid the task at hand. To combat this, I throw in my AirPods, turn on noise canceling, and put on dark noise. The rest of the world simply just disappears and I'm focused just on the task in front of me. Dark noise isn't only for working. It's great for that, but it also works out really great if you're somebody that needs white noise to fall asleep to, or maybe you wanna just put on some lake sounds and relax. Dark noise is available on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Dark Noise is free to download, so go check it out. I will put a link to it in the description below. My thanks to Dark Noise for sponsoring this video and all of my WWDC videos. Can't say the headset. Everyone would say it. Yeah, everyone would say the headset. And you got to try the headset. That's the cool thing. I, yeah, so, you're putting a muzzle on me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably go with the improvements to AirDrop. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I feel like AirDrop, it has, it's awesome, but it has like its limitations. Uh -huh. and you have to stay by it nearby but being able to connect to the internet now and be a, completely away from the person you're sending something to i think that's going to be a game changer yeah not to mention being able to send share like to share play and share content as well as like those contact posters i think it's gonna be pretty cool pretty exciting things announced during wwdc a lot of nice quality of life improvements i think one of my favorites is definitely the interactive widgets on the ipad and on the mac it's already very tempting to kind of try and click things and the reminders widgets, check things off and other things. So it's nice that they're finally bringing that to us. I'm gonna go with everybody's favorite Apple platform, tvOS, and say- It is. Honestly, FaceTime on tvOS and support for continuity camera because I do Zooms with my wife's family every week and we have this big TV in front of us and we end up bringing out like a little laptop or an iPad to do the Zooms on and it's stupid. And now we won't have to do that. We can use the big TV, put everybody up there, put a phone up there to use as our camera. And we got our, our Sunday family chat happening on the big screen instead. I love it. It's a great idea. I like it. I have a conspiracy theory that this is going to lead to a new Apple TV with a sound bar and a camera. It is hard to imagine that this is not leading to either the kitchen HomePod with a screen. Mm -hmm. Which standby mode. Or the Apple TV that has a camera in it. Yeah. Or both. Probably both. Yeah. Okay, what was your favorite thing announced at WWDC? Hardware, software, whatever, cannot be the headset. Cannot be the headset. Can't uh, be the headset. The quality of life stuff all throughout iOS uh, that you can swipe on a message to do a reply in line. 
uh, the new message, or iMessage app drawers, and I really like uh, the interactive widgets. I think there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that opens uh, stuff up for developers. I think the coolest thing that Apple released that wasn't the headset, of course, was the 15-inch MacBook Air. I know a lot of people are going to like that, and it was nice to see the price of the 13-inch one drop a little bit. But in terms of software, I think on iOS 17, the visual live voicemail thing is really cool. That shows a transcript of someone leaving a voicemail, and then you can decide whether to pick it up or not, depending on if it's important. So those are the two things which I think are really cool. And if you like Apple and iPad stuff in general, then I'm sure Chris will drop a link to my YouTube channel below. Pretty easy for me. There's been a bunch of big performance improvements to camera capture. I think that's going to be really exciting. It's going to make just going for photo walks, that kind of thing, so much more pleasant, less delay. And the single best improvement is there's going to be an API for volume button capture. So we no longer have to do hacky workarounds. That's awesome. That's great. I'm excited. That screams action buttons coming to the it iPhone. It does right? seem like there might be another story to tell. I'm definitely excited about personal automations and shortcuts are actually automatic now. So previously you had to have confirmation for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location automations. And now they can be fully automatic so you can automate your devices to your heart's extent. That's going to be huge. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Let's, that's going to be huge. It's going to be fun. There's actually two, okay. if that's okay. Oh. Um, mm. I'll allow it. Okay, there's an upgrade to AV Foundation, which allows dim flashing lights and um, basically accessibility issues, that, um, sorry, accessibility features that are only available via Apple's video player Okay. to now be compatible with uh, custom video players from big media companies um, So or any developer. So that's kind of cool. Okay. But the standout for me has got to be FaceTime continuity camera on Apple TV because SharePlay is so underused mm -hmm. and is such a cool tool and facility. So it brings that in, but also you're going to have video from WebEx and uh, Teams and Zoom. and Zoom. Yep. And Zoom and there are APIs open. For yeah. So there'll be to tons of people adapt. to be able to add it. Yeah. Um, yeah, something like a photo booth app, yeah. I think would be really cool. For I can definitely room. see that happening. Yeah, absolutely. I would say I'm actually kind of excited for the standby feature and the heads up. But the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, they're both kind of the same because uh, it's really going to affect people's like desk set, mm -hmm. I think. Obviously, you know, like the virtual stuff. But I think also, you know, I've got like a flat charger on my desk right now. That's my setup. Yeah. This, and now I'm going to want to prop that up so that I can get you know, all the widgets and stuff on the iPhone. Yeah, same. I, I honestly think that's gonna be a killer feature. I'm really excited yeah. for it. One of the best things that I've seen so far, besides the headset, was not honestly- Not allowed to say the headset. Not allowed to say, not the, allowed to say I, the headset. I got you. Okay. I honestly think iOS 17 is quite a big update. We were expecting it to be like, oh, a little bit of like extra features here and there that you're gonna be most like the quality of life stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I legitimately think this is a huge upgrade. And one of the best things, sadly, is just like autocorrect and predictive text. Oh yeah. The yeah. new keyboard is insane. Yeah. And it also goes to your, I already put all the betas on all of my stuff. <laughs> so it goes to your Mac. It works the same way on your Mac. You see the little predictive text coming up. So accurate, super great. And also on the iPad too. Nice. Yeah, yeah awesome. I'm, I'm really excited for that stuff. Autocorrect has not been great for me lately, so I'm very excited. And just this. like updating the phone app, I never thought it would be kind of cool, but it like really needs new contact cards. And yeah, like, oh, absolutely. It just looks so sleek. Everything looks good. I'm excited for that. A huge thank you to everyone that was involved in this video, um, that took time out of their WWDC week to be involved in this. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I found it really interesting, the variety of just features and OS stuff that was picked. Uh, I'm glad I told people they couldn't pick the headset because almost everyone was like, yeah, headset, but I was like, no, nah, can't pick that. So huge thank you to everyone that was involved in it. Uh, have a great day, everyone.